Brian, back with you again. Today I'm going to do a contest entry for Glenn Kellaway's push to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, the last time I looked, I think he'd already passed that, but that's okay. Um, so as usual, you have to be a subscriber and make a video. And for this contest, he wants us to show three progressive rock albums. Um, so as I was selecting the records to show, I realized that I had never, or I can't remember ever having seen a definition for progressive rock. So uh, I did my own research and I'm just going to read. Uh, boy, I wish I, I should have put what site this came from, but I didn't. It says it emphasizes uh, ambitious compositions, experimentation, concept driven lyrics and musical virtuosity. So I decided for this uh, contest uh, to not show anything that was pretty obvious. So no Yes, King Crimson, Jethro Tull, Kansas, Rush, Pink Floyd, and that kind of thing. Uh, and the second thing I thought I would do is show a couple of Canadian albums and a couple that I haven't seen yet in this contest. So I'm going to start with a band from Oakville. Oakville is just around the corner from Toronto, between Toronto and, uh, and Hamilton. And this is the band, the first band is Saga. This record's called Heads or Tails. So Tales spelled a little differently. Um, this is their fifth album from 1983, and it was produced by Rupert Hine, who I mentioned in a, a video just a little while ago. Um, and as always, every time I, I always am curious about what categorization uh, bands get, because I, I, I know that this is uh, often regarded as progressive, but again, I went on to Wikipedia and they describe Saga as rock, progressive rock, new wave, power prop, Sorry, power pop and neo progressive rock, and all music describes them as album rock, hard rock, and prog rock. Um, and a quote I found about them was uh, a taste for symphonism and melodies, and a real talent for efficient riffs. So I'm pretty sure that 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 works. Um, the one thing I will say about this record is, in this particular era of Saga, they moved. Uh, well, they have, I I would say, shorter songs than you might expect from a prog rock band. It's sort of in this case or this era, prog mixed with maybe a bit of new wave. Uh, but I enjoy this band. It's a fairly well-known Canadian band. I actually don't know how well known they're how well known they are outside of outside of Canada. For the second record I decided to go to the Montreal area, the Montreal scene, and choose uh, an EP from Godspeed You Black Emperor. I mentioned them in the vinyl tags I did uh, I guess a couple weeks ago. This is a band from Montreal. The name's not on the front. Uh, the, the band's on the back. The band name and the album title are on the back. So this is called Slow Riot for New Zero Canada EP. I, I love the, the packaging here. Godspeed You Black Emperor always has amazing packaging. So they opted not to put the band's name on the front or the spine, put it on the back. Um, it has a pretty interesting inner sleeve. Just um, text and the record. This particular one is a uh, 45 RPM. Again, there's no indication of the band on the uh, on the labels. This band's often no, often described as being post rock. Uh, so I, again, I looked them up because I wanted to see what was said about them. And on let's see, on Wikipedia they're known they're referred to as post rock, experimental rock, and drone. All music described them as alternative or indie rock, experimental rock, post rock, indie rock, space rock. Um, however, I, I did some further searching and found a, a, a thread on Prague archives in which they concluded, you know, that, that the consensus was that this band is a, is a Prague band. So uh, if you don't know them, they tend to put very long pieces that have some classical elements with some rock elements. An interesting band. And despite being an EP, this, this record's actually 30, almost 30 minutes long, so it's, it's uh, not much, much shorter than some, some regular LPs. Well, a couple of things I should say about that band is they um, started out with three members. I think at one point there were 15 members, and now it sort of centers around, I think, nine or so members. And there's a number of offshoots from this band. Uh, you might have heard of Silver Mount Zion, sometimes known as the Silver Mount Zion and Memorial... Silver Mount Zion Memorial Band and Tralala Band. I'm getting them confused, but a long, a long name. Set Fire to Flames is another one. Um, Fly Pan Am is associated. Uh, just because I have the CD handy, I, this is the CD. It's the same as the record, except it doesn't actually have the name of the band on the back, even. But it does have the name of the record on the spine. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I think I have all the Godspeed You records on CD and, and vinyl. I really like them. 
Another funny thing about that band is uh, I think they were in Oklahoma early 2000s, 2003, and they were getting gas in their tour van. And for some reason, the gas station attendant thought that they were terrorists, so they phoned the police. The police came in, and they, they were later questioned by the FBI before, before being released. That's a, a funny story. Um, I don't know how they got confused with terrorists, but it's actually an interesting story. Uh, for the last record, I'm going to keep this brief, is I chose a band called Umphreys McGee from South Bend, Indiana. This is the band's sixth record from 2009. It's called Mantis. Just open it up here, the gatefold. Um, and again, I'll just show you, I'll just read what I read um, about this band. Wikipedia calls them rock jam band, jazz fusion, funk rock, progressive rock, progressive metal, and neo-progressive. Um, they include many, many different styles like reggae, metal, funk, jazz, blues. All music calls them ja a jam band or neo-prog. I don't hear much metal on this record, um, but it does have a lot of influences from all over the place, which I think is really interesting. And, you know, just uh, as usual these days, custom labels. So actually, I don't know very much about this band beyond this record. I, I picked this up in a in a bin a, a few years ago, and it was I don't know five or six dollars still sealed. So I decided to grab it. Um, so that's it for the three prog records for Glenn. Uh, as usual, you should uh, check out his channel and subscribe. And um, good luck to everyone else. Thanks very much.